Amazing. Thank you so much. New Year's Day 2011. I'm in my mid-20s, unemployed and broke. Utterly desperate, I walk into the Corvette Diner looking for a job I heard was currently open. Disc jockey. The Corvette Diner is like a Johnny Rockets on mega steroids. A massive eating establishment that trades in good old-fashioned whitewashed Americana from the 1950s and 60s. The only anachronistic feature is a giant poster of Guy Fieri giving the diner a seal of approval with a big frosted tip thumbs up. Waitresses with big attitudes and soda jerks with even bigger regrets <laughs> are required to take monikers like Trudy, Maud, and Buster, all hearkening back to simpler times. It's the kind of place that makes you feel like everything's gonna be okay so long as you keep sucking on that peanut butter hopscotch milkshake. Walking up to Fred, the lead disc jockey and a lifer at the Corvette, I made my DJing intentions known. Fred with his sweet smile, Tommy Bahama shirt and khaki cargo shorts asked if I'd ever DJed. I hadn't, but I didn't say this. Instead, I responded, spin all the time, dude. <laughs> Great, Fred replied. And I assume you're familiar with 50s and 60s top 10 billboard hits? Before I even questioned if I should tell the truth, another straight up lie popped out. Am I ever? That stuff is my jam. Okay, so maybe it was a half lie. At the time, I knew the Rolling Stones, the Beatles, and Elvis, but flipping through the Corvette's playbook of songs was useless. Still, I picked a few tracks at random, pure shots in the dark, and Fred threw them on the Corvette's airwaves iTunes circa 2009. And I sweated to those oldies for nearly 20 minutes. By the time song number five played, Fred closed his eyes. <sighs> oh my goodness, he exhaled. This is one of the best playlists that anyone has ever put together when applying for this job. And thus, DJ Etch-A-Sketch was born. I didn't know what I was doing, but somehow, some way, I'd found my niche along with my silky radio voice. Hey, groovy dudes, hep cats, and boogie down babes, grab yourself a cherry cola and head on over to where everyone is working at the car wash. It is without a doubt one of the best jobs I've ever had in my entire life, proving that it is usually does work out for mediocre white guys with marginal to zero talent. <laughs> but I couldn't be DJ at your sketch forever. After a year at the Corvette, I left San Diego for the Bay Area, subcoming to a big boy career. With a heavy heart, I put away my turntables, iTunes circa 2010, and instead focused on being a stupid adult with mature responsibilities. But something was missing. My world was thrown off balance. I intensely craved that elusive high I had experienced at the Corvette. The problem was I didn't know where to get my fix in the bay. I tried to drown my sorrows and desires by going to certain bars on Tuesdays and Wednesdays and Thursdays, bars that only advertised one thing, karaoke. <laughs> My routine consisted of ordering a drink, or two or three, uh, stirring up some liquid courage, submitting my nom de plume of MC Pasty to the KJ, then ripping loose on the mic with an old school Jay-Z track, give it to me, parentheses, I just wanna love you, you know what it's like. When the Remy's in the system, ain't no telling, will I fuck em, will I diss em, that's what they be yelling. I'm a pimp by blood, not relay Sean. Y'all replay some, I be chase some, what? Because when you're a nice Jewish boy from the hardcore streets of Salt Lake City, Utah, you have to find a rhythmic way to express yourself. 
But once again, reality bit. Showing me what happens if you rock and roll all night and only go to your grown-up place of employment every other day. MC Pasty had to retire. But my cravings continue to gnaw, even grow more intense. Around this time, one of my San Francisco roommates, Rita, worked for a startup. Shocking, I know. This startup was moving their offices into an old historic building in downtown. Calm down, you guys. This happens all the time. And this move came with a party, and this party came with the search for a DJ. Even though I owned no equipment, and it had been several years since I had played at the Corvette, I offered my services. Rita was very generous. Jake, we're going to rent you whatever you need. What is on your list? Besides an iPod mini? No idea. Being a real DJ with an actual sound system was way out of my league, but not wanting to sound like a novice, I answered, you get me the biggest, baddest, most expensive system you can afford. Wish granted. <laughs> when I walked into the venue that day, I was greeted by a gargantuan AV system, three stories tall. Subwoofers begat baby subwoofers with grandbaby subwoofers. There were two technicians who were going to be monitoring my levels all night long, both of whom bombarded me with questions about XLRs and RCAs and other technical jargon. And I kept asking how to plug my headphones into the, the thingy that connects to the laptop device. You, you know, guests had already started to arrive. Things needed to get started pronto. I got this, you guys. I got this kept coming out of my mouth, even though I didn't have it or even know what it was. With one nervous finger, I hit the space bar on my laptop. And just like my audition at the Corvette, the power of Guy Fieri blessed me because when I pressed that button, beautiful music came out of the speakers. Guests moseyed their way onto the dance floor. The joint got jumping. DJ Etch-A-Sketch had been resurrected. As the cutoff time for the party rolled around, Rita approached me with light in her eyes. Can you keep playing to like Three in the morning? I gave a cocky nod of my head. Pass me that Costco-sized bottle of whiskey and we have a deal. I took a long slug off the bottle. Then, without waiting for any other beats to drop, I promptly blacked out. <laughs> the next thing I remember was waking up in a living room surrounded by family portraits of people I did not recognize. <laughs> I hadn't the faintest notion of where I was, except the house was not my own. My wallet was empty, cell phone dead, and I was missing a shoe. Exiting the house, I approached the first person I saw, no doubt fearful of interacting with me in my current state of complete chaos. Where am I? I asked. Oakland, the bewildered passerby informed me. <sighs> I didn't live in Oakland. When I finally made my way back to San Francisco, I plugged in my phone to see about 20 text messages and 30 missed calls. Various people, friends, neighbors, all had tried to contact me. The last voicemail, however, was from a woman I didn't know and had no memory of meeting. Hey, Jake, or should I say, DJ Etch a Sketch? My name is Natalie, and um, I got your contact info from the party last night, and I just loved how you jumped on the table, busted some moves, and rapped for all of us. Oh, no. Flashback, it all rushed into my head. DJ Etch-A-Sketch undergoing a Jekyll and Hyde transformation into MC Pasty, who snatched the microphone, sauntered onto the dance floor, and spit a classic flow like Drunk Off Chris, Mommy on E, Can't Keep a Little Oil Hands Off Me, both in the club, I singing off key, and I wish I never met her at all. I couldn't have, but 
I did. I know in my heart of hearts it was true. The voicemail continued, um, I'm an event coordinator and I'm looking to hire a DJ for our corporate retreat at the Ritz Carlton next month. Holy shit, I booked another gig at the Ritz Carlton. Then it hit me. Even at this point in my short DJing career, I knew I couldn't be an embarrassment or go hog wild at this next gig. If I was going to be paid to DJ, the least I could do was stay sober and remain professional throughout the event. For the Ritz Carlton party, I purchased my own equipment, arrived on time, and it was a well-behaved gentleman on the mixer. As the night went on, Natalie found me in the DJ booth. So she started. When are you going to get drunk and rap on the mic like you did at the last party? My face flushed red. Oh, I don't do that anymore. I managed. That's not really who I am as a DJ. But she trailed off. That's the whole reason I hired you. Well, if that wasn't my cue, I don't know what was. I immediately took a shot, then another, no chaser necessary. Picking up the mic, I hit the space bar and let the glorious beat drop as I made my way to the dance floor. Thank you. 